Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video about using microbits. You can access microbit by using the computer or you can download the app onto your device. You do not need to have a physical microbit built into all of the platform. There is a digital version of the microbit which you can use and that's what I'm going to be talking about using. Today, you're going to learn how to play, how to code and create your own version of the game I'm sure you won't have heard of, Flappy Bird. On Microbit, instead of Flappy Bird, they actually call it Crashy Bird. And in order to create this game, you're gonna to have to use lots of sequencing, lots of conditionals, and a new term, a Boolean, which is where you're gonna be using some of the logic to compare two bits of code together or combine them. This is the most challenging activity that I've put on here yet, by quite a long way. I really recommend paying a lot of attention to the video and pausing it along the way as it plays so you can catch up and make sure you're at the same point as I am. Good luck. I really hope you enjoy making this piece of code and playing the game, as well as hopefully challenging yourself a little bit more. Firstly, you want to add a bird to the game. I want this to run on the on start button. I'm going to create a new variable called bird and I'm going to set the bird, start the bird at a specific point on the icons on the micro bit. I'm going to use the game function for this and I want to create the sprite at x coordinates 0 and y 2. You can see the icon now is set to the left of my screen in the middle. Lastly, I'm just going to make sure that the sprite then is set but flashing. So instead of sprite, I need it to be bird and I want it to blink and I'm going to set that to 300. Now the icon is blinking. Now you've added the bird to your game, you want to add some controls. The normal controls for Flappy Bird would be using the space bar or tapping the screen and you move up. In this game, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so you've got two controls. You can move the bird up or you can move the bird down. The reason for this is because we don't have the option to have gravity acting on the icon, so it won't move down on its own. I need to ensure that the bird is moving by the Y axis, and I'm gonna make sure it's moving for the A button by minus one, and I can just duplicate this code. And for the B button pressed, I want it just to move by one. Let's have a go. So A, it's moving up and B is moving down on the Y axis. This is where the code gets more challenging because I'm going to start generating obstacles. Now, I want to randomly generate obstacles inside an array and I want every obstacle to have a small gap for the bird to fly through. So I'm going to use the onStart command again and I'm going to set a new variable called obstacles. And I want to set obstacles. I'm going to use the array button down here to an empty array. That's the first step. Now I'm going to create a new variable under on start as well. You will notice I'm setting these up, but afterwards I'm going to start moving them across. And this variable is going to be called empty obstacle. But instead of setting it to zero, just like last week when we looked at using different inputs, I'm going to pick randoms and that is found underneath maths. So I'm going to pick a random zero to four. Now I'm going to use the loops button for index from zero to four. And then under logic, I'm going to start using a conditional. So if But instead of the if true part there, I'm going to use the logic button again and I want to use this additional bar and change it to this format. And I want that to read if index instead. So I can get that from variable. If index equals empty obstacle, then under array, I want the obstacles to 
add value to end. So back into variables, and I'm going to make sure I've got obstacles to add value from game create sprite at x axis 4 and y I want the index so what that's doing now is that's making sure that I'm creating obstacles at the far side before moving on you won't be able to see your obstacles come up because currently they're both greyed out under the on start buttons because you can only use the on start key once so what I'm going to do instead is drag my code out and put it underneath on start and you will be able to see that the obstacles are being generated randomly. Now if I drag that away and I drag it underneath again, you'll notice that the obstacle has generated in a completely different way. And that shows that the random queue that I've put for it is working correctly. That means that I can move on to the next part of my code, which is making the obstacles move. For this then, I'm going to use the forever block and I'm going to go into loops and for element, I want this part where it says value of list, but instead I'm going to change it for obstacle or I actually don't have obstacle created right now. I've got obstacles and empty obstacle, so I need to make a new variable. It's really important you're making new variables because just the slightest change in word and then that variable will cause a complete difference in your code. And I want that to be obstacle of obstacles. And then under advanced and in the game, I want the obstacle to change by minus one. So what that's going to do forever is it's going to mean that the obstacles move towards you. Obviously, you don't want this to happen really quickly, as I'll show you now. You want there to be a break in between because no one can react quickly enough for that. So under basic, just put a pause in. This is a pause for 100. I'd recommend putting in 1,000 milliseconds. Let's watch the difference. It's far easier to work with when it's got a longer pause and it means that the game will be funner to play. When you're challenging yourself later, you could look into speeding it up as you gradually go through each of the obstacles, and that could be a way to challenge your coding skills. At this point, I've generated obstacles, but the problem is the obstacles are not disappearing as they would in the game. So I need to ensure that the obstacles are disappearing so you can continue to face new ones. In order to do this, I need to do the loops, and I'm going to use the while true part because there's space for logic the four element snaps in but i need to make sure i've moved that out so the first thing i'm going to use is under logic i'm going to put in a boolean and within that boolean the first space is for a comparison and i want the more than symbol in that comparison or greater than under arrays i'm going to have length of array and i need to change that to the length of the array is the obstacles, and I want more than zero. Secondly, and I need another logic, which I'm going to use comparison, but then I'm going to go into the game part, and I want the obstacles get value at zero and x. So what I'm going to do here is sprite there, and then I'm going to go into array, and snap in that new block list get value at zero you can see there's an error that's because i've got list currently and i need to change that to the obstacles so obstacles get value zero x equals zero so while that happens do so under game i need to delete the obstacles and i'm going to remove them at the value of zero So I want the obstacles to remove value at zero. When I'm saying zero, I want them to remove at the far left of the screen. And you can see in the code just there on the micro bit, when it got to the far left of the screen, 
the obstacles disappeared. Now I've got the point where I'm generating obstacles and they're moving to the left of the screen and disappearing, I just need to make sure this process keeps happening. In order to do that then, I'm going to move the, this piece of code earlier that I did, which was under the on start button, and I'm going to run it underneath the four element loop, making sure that the pause is still at the bottom. However, you can see that the micro bit is just full of different obstacles now. So what I need to do is ensure that these are spaced out equally. So under the loops button, I'm going to put if true, then I'm using a conditional. But instead of if true, then I'm going to use the logic and I'm going to add a comparison. So if comparison equals zero, and in this part here, I need to use the mass button for the remainder. So if remainder is divisible by one equals zero, then it's going to create more. However, for the remainder, I need to add a new variable. What I'm going to add now is ticks. What ticks do is under running the forever block, ticks just count how many times it's run and in this function it's been divided and then it works out if it needs to recreate a new one. So I'm going to create a new variable called ticks and I'm going to drag the ticks in to be part of the conditional there. Now you can see that if it's generated underneath, if the empty obstacle has been generated, and it's picked a random from zero to four, and it's created a new one, I just need to make sure I've got the change ticks at the end, just before the pause. I was quite baffled at this point because my obstacles were still moving without any pause in between, but I've put ticks in, and then I looked closely at my code, which is something I really recommend doing, is read it really quickly, and you can see where it says remainder of ticks, I divided it by one, I need to divide it by three instead. And now you'll be able to see that there's space in between the obstacles. That just shows how important it is to read back through your code at all points and really debug any issues there might be with it. Lastly then, what I want to ensure in my game is that the game will finish if you hit the obstacles, because currently that is not the case. And in order for any good game, there needs to be a way to win or a score to continue. And you need a way for the game to finish to lose in that game. And so in order to do that, I'm going to go into loops and I'm going to use the four element. And I'm going to drag that in. Now mine's not snapping underneath. So what I suggest you do is you snap out the chain kits and the pause and put that underneath and then you can snap it back in. Now instead of value at the top, I want this to be obstacle instead so i'm going to drag that one in to obstacle and then i can use the drop down and choose obstacles so for element obstacle of obstacles then i'm going into logic and i want the if true but i'm actually going to extend this because i want it to be if logic and so i need to drag in the if true and then go back into logic again and select the two conditionals. So the Boolean again. Then I'm gonna move into game and I need to put the sprite on the X, but first I need to do the comparison. So I'm gonna get that back from loops and I'm gonna use the comparison and then I can drag the sprite part in. Instead of sprite, I'm going to make it the obstacle. If the obstacle on X equals the bird on X, so I can just duplicate this and put it in. Ooh. And that's only working on the X axis at the moment. So I'm going to duplicate again and again. I'm going to put these back in with another logic of comparison. So that if the obstacle on the y-axis equals the bird on the y-axis, 
then in game I want it to be game over and that's it I've now reached the end of my code so I'm going to play my game and see if it works If you finish that part and you want to improve your code, you can challenge yourself then to create a score. So in the variables, you'll need to use the index. And then in the game part, you can change the score as well as you're moving along. So that would be how you improve your code after this point. So that's it. How to make a game of Flappy Bird or Crashy Bird on a micro bit. What you can do if you've got a micro bit now is download it. And you can follow the steps on the screen in order to get that onto your micro bit.